Hi, I'm Dr. Joshua Yamamoto. I am a cardiologist in Washington, D.C., and one of the co-founders of the Foxhall Foundation. We're going to put together a very quick little talk here on some of the basics, the short course on preventing strokes or how to prevent a stroke. Now, the Foxhall Foundation is a nonprofit which started in 2014 dedicated to helping everyone age well. The point is, as we go through life, things change, and it's a process that's no longer mysterious. It's something that we understand quite well, and we have the ability to manage it, and we can do things to help ourselves grow older and grow healthier. Uh, we also have a wellness program. If you're in the Washington, D.C. area, feel free to check that out. It's in the Maryland suburbs and Friendship Heights. Now, good health. Health as we get older isn't something that just happens. It isn't something that is uh, about luck or even entirely about personal effort alone good health doesn't happen we have to build it and we build it as we age there is what we like to call the the pyramid of prevention the foundations how to build a firm foundation of health we're not going to talk about all of these things uh, in this little talk but a couple of them that lead us to protecting the brain and preventing strokes now We've all been told that if we eat well and exercise, life is good and that's all we need to do and that's all prevention is about. But there's really more to it than that. Prevention, prevent is an active verb. It's something that we do. If all it took was a good diet uh, to live forever, rabbits would be immortal and you know what, they're not. So also, fitness matters. Fitness matters quite a bit. The Wellness Center we created is a whole program about bringing fitness to anyone and everyone, yet, Look at the tortoise. They can live to be 100 and they're not exactly running fast. So there's more than just our diet and activity, although those things do matter. And one of the important things to remember is no one, none of us, are immune from time. Time is going to pass and time is going to change things and none of us are immune from our genetics. We are born with a certain hand, a genetic hand. We're dealt a set of cards. And we can't change those cards, but we can learn how to play them and play them well. So the foundation put out a book recently, which I encourage everyone to read, You Can Prevent a Stroke. Originally, we were going to title it The Baby Boomer's Guide to the Prevention of Vascular Dementia because strokes clearly are involved damaging the brain. And as we get older, the last thing we want to do is live long with brain damage. There's also an important sub-theme that there's almost no such thing as heart disease. It's just natural aging almost so really quickly we're going to talk about what is a stroke and what can i do to prevent a stroke a stroke is a cerebrovascular accident which means interrupted impaired or inadequate blood flow to the brain cerebro means a brain vascular refers to circulation so basically a stroke is brain damage because you didn't get enough blood to the brain and that's usually because of a clot we get a blood clot in the brain that's what a stroke most strokes are. Lots of statistics on how many strokes are preventable, possibly over 80%. In my world, if I find that somebody's had a stroke, I always ask as a doctor, what did we not do to prevent that? Because it's really our job, the, your physician working with you. So if you get a clot in the brain that causes brain damage, where does the clot come from? They come from the arteries in the neck, or the clots can form inside the heart, or the clots can actually form inside the tiny little arteries in the head themselves. So you get the theme. Arteries are important in also understanding your heart. The carotid arteries go up the neck. They bring blood right up into the head. And these are important. The carotid arteries are one of the first place that can show signs of natural aging. It's not just about blockages, it's about having a healthy artery being clean on the inside, if you will. And as we age, everybody's arteries change because of something called chronic inflammation or chronic vascular inflammation, which really just wear and tear in the arteries. I love this shot. We have 100,000 heartbeats a day. That's like getting slapped in every single artery 100,000 times a day. Of course, that causes injury and that causes healing. On the outside, if we got slapped this often, we would have scabs, we'd have scars, and on the inside, we developed plaque. Plaque in arteries is not a disease. Plaque is a natural consequence of aging. And so we have to be mindful of that, that no matter what, because time passes, we're going to develop plaque. And it's really like having rust in a pipe. 
This picture is actually just a, just a pipe. It has nothing to do with the human body. But it's so gross that I like to think about it. That this is what's going on in our arteries naturally as we age. We like to prevent that. Okay, so you want to know about the health of your arteries. How do you know? You look. No one said it's that hard. It's something called an ultrasound, which is something your doctor can easily arrange for, for you to have. And if you look at an artery, it may look like this. This is a picture of a nice, healthy artery. There's a black stripe down the middle of this picture. That's a healthy artery. And bringing blood right up to the brain. Oh, sometimes we look at an artery, and this is an artery in a fairly young person, 50, which in my world is young, uh, with a little bit of a plaque. You can see that little white nubbin in the artery. It's like a little bit of coral beginning to grow. That's atherosclerosis. That's plaque in an artery as a natural consequence of aging. And sometimes that plaque, if you look at it closely, may actually be a little bigger than you think or a lot bigger than you might think. This is not blocking flow. There are many more pictures to this, but the point is you can look at an artery and say, do I have clean pipes or am I already growing plaque? And you're going to grow plaque. It's just part of aging. And if you look really carefully in the middle of this picture, you can see something moving. That's a blood clot. Blood clots form on these plaques. I have a host of pictures of people who came to see me without a care in the world or a symptom in the world, yet they had plaque and they had blood clots already forming. If that blood clot breaks off, remember, that's an artery right here going right up to the brain. That clot will land in the brain, kill off that part of the brain. That's a stroke. We'd like that to not happen. Everyone grows plaque with age unless we stop it. Just because you're a vegetarian, yes, even vegetarians have strokes. It was Diet has an important role in our overall health. That is absolutely true, but there's more to it than diet. Remember, there's the time factor and our genetics. Okay, so if you want to have uh, healthy arteries, we have to prevent it. I'm going to have another talk coming up on all the things we can do to make sure our arteries are healthy. Now it's important just to remember, if you don't know the health of your arteries, you don't know the health of your arteries, and they're always going to change. So what else happens as we get older? Another thing that happens to all of us is our heart becomes a little more slower and a little more irregular with time. The natural heartbeat is what we call a sinus rhythm. We have a natural healthy pacemaker that makes our heart beat in a steady way. And as we get older, that natural pacemaker loses its health, begins to slow down and become less reliable. I, can live, I love to compare the heart to a marching band. The Marine Corps band, nice and marching in step. There's a guy in the front, the drum major, calling the tempo, keeping everybody on beat, calling a regular tempo, and the heart steps forward or the heart pumps in a regular way. But you know what? Everybody gets older, including the drum major. That's great. They may have been slow and robust when they were young and have a nice uh, steady heartbeat, as, but as we get older, our heart does not generate heartbeats as promptly, as quickly, or as reliably. That's that chart you see at the gym. What's my expected heart rate with age? It's a graph that goes down. Everybody does get slower and that slowness does encourage the irregularity. My alma mater, marching band. A lot of great musicians in that band, but you know what? They weren't always very keen on staying regular. And if your band is running chaotically around the field, even if they're making good music, it's irregular. And this is what atrial fibrillation is all about. It's a heart that can be strong but still be irregular. When you have an irregular heartbeat, we call it atrial fibrillation. This is an electrocardiogram or an EKG. You look at it, it's irregular. That's how you know someone's an AFib. Again, on the left, the Marine Corps band, good drum major, nice and regular. On the right, some nameless university band, not so regular, a little bit out of step or entirely chaotic. So AFib is an irregular heartbeat. And we care because when the heart is disorganized and irregular, blood isn't flowing smoothly through it, and that means it has a chance to pool and to clot. There you go. You get clots inside the heart. And if the clot leaves the heart, where does it like to land? In the brain. Brain damage. That's a stroke. So clots come from these arteries and they come from the heart. And you have to know what the health of your arteries and your heart are. A couple of really fun yet terrifying but motivational facts. A recent study looked at 70-year-olds and monitored them for an extremely long period of time and found that 35% of them had atrial fibrillation that most of them did not feel, yet it only takes five minutes of atrial fibrillation to double your risk of having brain damage or having a stroke. So you kind of need to know. And we don't sit around waiting for symptoms. Symptoms do not predict risk. 
That is just such an important thing. Symptoms, I'll say it again, do not predict risk. I don't care about your, I do care, but it doesn't matter if you feel fluttering or dizziness or any other symptoms. What matters is, are you irregular? You need to know, because if you're irregular, if you have atrial fibrillation, you're going to have a stroke. And so, you know with the EKG, a regular rhythm versus an irregular one. It's not something you guess by checking your pulse. You have to have an electrocardiogram to know whether it's irregular or not. Electrocardiograms, we hook up all the wires on your chest and we take that neat little picture to see what the EKG is doing. This is my earlier life, I did modeling. No, but you can monitor in a lot of ways to see if you are having atrial fibrillation intermittently, on and off, on and off. It doesn't have to be all the time with all sorts of uh, commercially available. And these are monitors that your doctor can order for you that you can wear for a week or more. And we have all sorts of clever new gadgets out there that aren't just looking as fitness trackers. That's all well and good. But the newer ones are actually looking specifically for atrial fibrillation. There's a host of them out there. They're good, but they're not great, but they are good. And they make us ask questions. Am I having atrial fibrillation? You want great, you can get it. This is uh, a medical device. Medicare approved. It's a marvelous thing. It's a little implant that slips under the skin, kind of like chipping a dog. But the point is you can monitor and record your heart's electrocardiogram and know if you have atrial fibrillation for as long as you want. The battery in this little device lasts for several years. And that's the sort of thing that will send information to your doctor. Oh, you're having atrial fibrillation. It was three in the morning. You didn't even wake up for it. Yet, if we don't do something, you're just at a rising, rising risk of having brain damage, having a stroke. So important things to know about the risk of having AFib, which is one of the main drivers of strokes, is that age is the biggest factor. People with higher blood pressure, which is also age related, and the slowing heart. That's kind of the recipe for people to have atrial fibrillation. It's extremely common, possibly inevitable if we live long enough. Uh, I don't think any of my 100 year old patients, and we have a lot of 100 year old patients, are completely free of atrial fibrillation. It's just part of the time process. You don't know you have it until you get the EKG, so you've got to look for it. Also, it's important to know, oh, you said this is really part of the natural aging process. That means we don't look to cure it, we look to manage it. Okay, you've got to manage it. Again, I'm gonna have a couple of talks coming up on managing atrial fibrillation. This is not the 1990s. We have to get out of this no notion that everything that's out there is a, is a disease with a label and there has to be a cure for it. A lot of life is about managing a natural aging process, but if we don't manage it, bad things like brain damage, like strokes, like vascular dementia will happen. So you need to know if you have AFib, know what you're doing about it, how to manage it, and that's something you do with your doctor. Hence, the Foxhall formula. What's our little algorithm to help us remember what to do? Notice I haven't given you all the answers yet. I'm just trying to introduce the questions that need to be asked. We like to say it's de heart. It's de heart. D, your doctor. You have to work with your doctor. You can't really know your medical health on your own. Someone went, no. anyway, there's the most important doctor is your doctor. Looking stuff up online is all well and good. We're online, get started, ask questions. But you ask questions, get your answers by working with your doctors and say, hey, H-A-R-T, what's the health of my heart? And how do I know? What are the health of my arteries taking blood to my brain? And how do I know? And what are my rates and rhythms? And how do I know? And T, is it time to do something? Is it time for me to take a pill? Yes, remember the rabbit, rabbit and the tortoise, all of the diet and exercise are not in the world is not just enough. There are things we can do as your physicians and things that you need to do as a person to say, for me, what do I need to do to keep my heart healthy, my arteries healthy, understand how to manage my heart's rhythm and rate, and is it time for me to do something with my doctor or on my own? So a couple of final quick messages. None of us are immune from aging. We're going to age. That's marvelous. You can't change the fact that we have a genetic hand and time marches on. We, none of us know our health on our own. You don't know the health on the inside unless you look, but looking is not hard to do. And once you know your health, you work with your doctor to know what your options are. You can slow down the aging process and build a healthier future with a lot of personal effort, our diet and our exercise. But there are things we can do to actually stop and in some cases reverse the aging process. We cheat with medications. I love to say prevent is an active verb. 
You don't just try to avoid risks, you prevent. You prevent a stroke. That is an active thing you need to do. So you can find out more, get the book. All the proceeds support the foundation, trying to reach out to everyone in the community to help us age well. There's a, a link, you can get it at your favorite, support your local book dealer. You can prevent a